Welcome everybody to Friday's webinar. Uh, today we're working in Camaster Pro version 11.1, the latest version, which is currently available to all customers, is 11.1.0.121. Today we're going to be talking about Doormaster LT and having a look primarily at Shaker, Shaker V, a quick look at Series 3 Style 6, which is JPL, and a quick look at Series 1 Style 1, which is the beveled edge. So what is Doormaster for? Doormaster LT allows you to apply door profile to your cabinets, uh, to your cabinet doors, sorry. You can view the profile in 3D, view the machining and even export the machining for the profiles if you have those profiles unlocked. By default, the profiles that you will have available, a series one, style one, shaker, and Shaker V. You'll see that other profiles, for example, if I go to choose three style one, are unavailable. We will discuss that later. To apply a profile, we go to our drone properties. Down the side here to Doormaster LT, profile doors and now I'm going to select shaker shaker machining is on and I'm going to tick a profile on by default the profile will only appear on door materials so if you want to apply this to panels you can do it through job setup materials floor is panel or panelist door I should say if you only want to do it to specific panels, not all panels in the job, you'd simply put down a tall panel or a floor panel or a wall panel, a bar back panel would do it too. Sorry, that's shown up in the wrong section. There it is there. And it's done that. I should have had this sorted. My apologies. Get it to fit the page a bit better. There we go. And then you go material, panelist door. There's our shaker. I will delete that because we don't need it. Once we have done this, whether it's through drawing properties or that particular panel, we can look at anything. So we'll grab a cabinet. If we look at the cabinet, we can view it in 3D view. So we'll go 3D wide frame. The easiest way to see what it is, is with hidden. And it very clearly shows what is going on. Of course, we can view it in solid and textured. You can also, by going to machining and then choosing our door or our panel or whatever we're looking at, we can see the actual machining layer for it. If we click on that edge, Extend that across, you can see that the layer is shaker. And this is what EasyNest will read to apply the appropriate toolpath. So, again, what is available? So, by default, there's Series 1, Style 1, Shaker, and Shaker V. All the other profiles are locked, and I will discuss that in a minute. Well, firstly, quickly cover series one style one because it applies to nearly all the other profiles. That 
is supposed to be there as well. I'll shrink that to fit. Excellent. There we go. So you can turn this one on and off just like that. Serious one style one with the edge style off is just a slab door, just like a normal flat panel door. This edge style, which is what Series 1 style one is, is available in most of your other profiles. As you can see it there. And we'll go back to there. If you never noticed, it does have click for settings. You can click the picture of the door. Or alternatively, I believe you can click the picture down here too. There you go. And then you have this here too. So the name you see here, that's not the layer. That is the layer that will go to Easy Nest. Um, it's not even the profile that will be shown in 3D because that is the profile there. Um, you can alter all of this information by going to click to edit. And then if you wanted to change the layer to say, I'm going to call it Nick's edge. And then for the 3D, I could say, I want it to look like an Uji. I can offset it by X amount, set the depth. If I save that, go apply and okay, you can see that no edge is no longer no edge. So generally, as a recommendation, I'd be only changing the offset and the depth to set up what you need for the tools in the machine. I will save that. Let me go OK. Bear with me a second. So if you do alter the offset, for example, I'm going to go to bevel short. It shows the bevel. That offset there can only be a negative value. And what that offset does is offset the layer from the part. So example, if we set that as 10 tab, you'll see it automatically goes to 10 mil. And I'm going to set the depth to 2. Save, OK, apply, OK, and we'll apply and OK, and apply and OK. We'll look at this door, and you can see, sorry about that, I scrolled over the drop down list. That there is our shaker edge, the line inside it is our border. So as long as you know your depth and how far offset the tool needs to be from the actual edge of the door, you can theoretically apply any tool to produce a profile on that door. So you're probably wondering now, how can I unlock these other profiles? Contact your local dealer. Um, if you're not sure who your local dealer is, contact technical support and we will be able to point you in the right direction. So now I'm going to look at a shaker. Shaker, shaker and shaker. I'll quickly apply that. So to set up your shaker profile, the minimum you need to know is how wide you want the profile. So that is the uh, rails and the styles. And how deep do you want the profile to be? So we'll click for, uh, click for settings. I'm 
going to turn that off and then I'm going to go to the frame. So this is where we can set our rails and styles. You can have double width for the middle rail, which is as we saw in that tall panel before it had the middle rail. Half width, you can create your own. Decide when they turn on and off. And then for drawers, you can turn half styles on. So when you've got a draw bank, it evens out that way. For the depth, we go to profile and that's where we set the depth. You can change the layer, but unless you need to, there really isn't any reason that will work in Easy Nest. And I think I have that just here. So that is a cross section of our door. You need to know the width of the profile, how deep you want it to be. Now, to set up the machining in Easy Nest, you need to get some information from your local tool supplier. These include the recommended feed rate, the plunge rate, the spindle RPM, the maximum depth of cut per pass, and the diameter of the tool. Um, and specifically, this information for the material that you'll be cutting, which is probably typically going to be MDF. Once you have all that information, you can contact support and we can help you set up those tools in EasyNest and create strategies to do what you need it to do. Um, I'm not going to show you today because every machine is different, tools are different. If I put in values and you copy them, they may not work in your machine. So this goes for any profile, any tool that's in Door Master LT. Even if you're changing your compression cutter to do your border cut. Again, we need feed speeds, all that sort of thing before you can set them up for you. You can find information on all of these profiles on our website, which I'll take you to now. You bear with me a minute. I will open that up there. So it's under products, Dual Master LT. And you can download the brochure just there. And you do have a button there to contact your local sales. So what tools do you need as a minimum to cut a shaker profile? Uh, you can use the same tool that you use for your border cut. You can use a compression cutter as long as it's a flat bottom end mill tool, whether it's a hog tool, compression cutter, down spiral. It will do a it will do a shaker because it is a island fill strategy. You can use a hatch fill. Bear in mind that hatch goes one end up back to the other end. And if you have a long, skinny, narrow part, it may do rapid movements back and forth all the way the length of the part rather than doing long smooth ones. So I prefer island fill. Um where are we now? If you do decide to use your compression cutter, be cautious because the upcut section of a compression cutter will chip the face of the board if it's not deeper than the recess of your profile. What happened there? I will zoom in a bit. We'll scroll down so I can just explain this a bit better. There we go. So on a compression cutter at the bottom edge, it's usually eight to 12 mil of upcut. If that upcut section lines up with the uh, face of your board, it will chip that face. So it needs to be deeper than that. If you plan on cutting shaker doors regularly, 
you'll find a 30 to 40 mil hog tool in combination with a small diameter down spiral will be the best combination uh, for economy and efficiency. Depending on the version of easy nest you're using, you'll have different options to set different tools to perform different cuts within the same strategy. So in best case scenario, you have a hog tool that will do the majority of the island fill cutout. You'll have a small diameter, like a, say an eight mil down spiral that will go around the border. And then you may use say a three mil down spiral that will just do little triangle cleanups in each corner of the door. Again, when you need help setting all this up, you can contact technical support to produce these strategies for you. So we'll now look at Shaker V. Apply, okay. And Shaker V is just there. So shaker V is simply a shaker door with a V groove. Now the width of the profile is from there to there. It doesn't go to there. Um, what you need to know about setting up a shaker V, everything that you need to know about setting up a shaker V, you've learned in shaker, except you've also got the V groove or the V cutting tool and you need the diameter of it. So, or the angle, I should say, not the diameter. The angle will automatically calculate how far away the layer for the shake of V needs to be so that it positions it right when it's nested. Again, if you're already cutting shakers, you want to start cutting shake of V, buy the tool from a reputable supplier, get your feeds and speeds, and then contact support and we can add that in for you. And of course you can change the layer names for both if you need to. Go apply, apply, okay. I think I have a handy little picture on that as well. Again, so the width of the profile is from there to there, doesn't include the angle. The shaker layer is this middle section, and then the shaker V layer is in there. j -Pool. so this is Series 3 Style 6 in Doormaster LT. Series three, star six. This is JPL here. As you can see, I haven't bought it, so I don't have it. But I can still set it all up. Show everything there. I can still apply the series one style one edge profile if I wanted to. So there's a few things that you need to consider for JPL handles. The big one is what tools you have available and how they're going to work together to achieve the desired outcome of this profile because it needs to be done in a very specific way. The order of the tools cutting in Easy Nest, if you get this wrong, it is very likely to break your machine. So first we'll talk about the pocket, which is this green section here, it's a little bit difficult to visualize here. So I've created a handy dandy little picture of it. So it will cut the pocket first. The pocket must be first. Pocket first. Now the pocket is an island fill similar to a shaker. 
uh, but it's on the edge of your door. And this makes room for the J-pool tool to lower into the material. So it does the pocket as a island or hatch fill. Then this tool comes down, starts away from the door, and then moves across into the door. And that's what we can see with our CAD master. Go back to there, just there. So it does the pocket first, and then the tool, which is the blue one, comes in and cuts the actual j profile. Now, the pocket from the edge of the door to the edge of the pocket needs to be greater than the diameter of the tool. That can be set up down here. You've also got the radius of the tool that does the pocket. It's generally a good idea to have the tool that's doing the pocket to be a small radius than the tool that's doing the actual profile. And that way you don't end up with squared out corners that won't have the actual profile applied. So the pocket depth must meet profile depth, which again, I have just there. If you need any help setting this up, um, obviously you can speak to your local dealer because that's who you purchase the profile on. Um, if not, contact technical support and we should be able to help you with this. Again, the pocket needs to be done first. Um, always get someone else uh, from technical support or the dealer to help set this up. Of course, here you can change the layer names again if you need to. Edge pool display. All this is doing is changing how it's displayed in 3D. Hence the, that there. You can then set what edges and how far in from the corners you want them for your floor, tall wall and drawers. If you don't want them centered, you can turn on, say, I want it on the top of my doors and I want it to be 10 mil from that side and 50 mil from that side. And then we've got Smart Enable. Yes. Again, if you need help setting this up specifically, talk to technical support or your local sales rep. If you want it to just go straight across instead of having that as yes and then zero, zero, you can just do that and then set that as zero. For tall doors, say you've got a tall pantry cupboard and you want them on the inside of each door, you can apply them to the side edges of your doors or long edges and then walls. You can go underneath and then drawers. It's all much the same again. And again, I know I'm saying this a lot, the pocket has to be done first to make the space for the tool to come down and then go in. So um, how do we set up two-part machining? So you're talking about six-face so that you can draw your hinges, um, handle holes, whatnot, and then you can flip the sheet over. You need Easy Nest or NROUT 7 or 23. If you have six or earlier, can't be done. We have a video on our website that also helps with that. 
on not our website, um, on our YouTube channel, I should say. Also worth talking to your local dealer. Um, if you need any more support on that contact technical support, it's one of those things that again is different for every machine and every easy nest set up. We'll quickly have a look at the new door profiles we have in version 12. So version 12 is coming out soon. It is currently in beta testing and we've had some fantastic feedback. We have some new door profiles to begin with. We now have all these extra shaker profiles, shaker arch, shaker pain, and then you've got arch pain and Vs for each version for most of the door profiles now, except series one style one. There is a arch and a pain available where it can be done. That gives you an indication. There is also, if I bring this over here, they now all have glass options. If you've bought a profile in version 11 or version 11.1, you can use that pro, you, you'll have that profile in version 12 too. So don't worry if you're updating, am I going to keep my profiles? Yes, yes, you'll still have them. Did anybody have any questions on that? Did that make sense for the J-Ball? Again, reiterating pockets first. Technical support can set up the tools, but we need feeds, speeds, maximum depth of cut, and the diameter of the tool. Excellent. Well, thank you for joining me this afternoon. Uh, I hope you all have a good weekend and I'll talk to you next Friday when we're talking about editing, modifying and creating new templates.